Did you know the gems used to travel all over outer space? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty far out, son. These warp pads were used to travel off planet. They were our connection to the gem homeworld and to gem controlled planets all over the universe. The gems were an intergalactic conquering power and we didn't know about it until now. <gasps> you mean we could go anywhere we want in outer space? That's assuming there was a warp pad where you wanted to go. The galaxy warps have all been inactive for thousands of years. Can't we fix them? Foreshad irony. Stay tuned for another episode of Crying Breakfast Friends. Crying Breakfast Friends is the lamest fictional cartoon I've ever witnessed. Yeesh, I must be getting old. I used to like cartoons. This statement could be used against almost any cartoon today. Dad, can you help me build a spaceship? Sure, why not? Yes, Steven. I, your underemployed, undereducated father, definitely have the capital and skill set to build an interplanetary vessel. In this one frame, I count four jet engines, five prop plane engines, a wing, and a helicopter tail. Doing even a little bit of math shows that's about $96.5 million worth of aircraft parts. Also, that engine in the middle of the screen looks like a jet with a propeller bolted to it. As much thrust as all of those engines are going to give you, I don't think you'll be able to get into space without a rocket. These nails aren't lined up with the planks at all. What is that thing made of, balsa wood? You need smooth, curving surfaces, otherwise you're never going to get enough speed to break Earth's gravitational pull. This is the least aerodynamic design you can think of, and one of the first mistakes people make when designing things like that. Also, I was going to run a wind tunnel simulation on this drawing to show why this is, but I spent more than a full day trying to install Autodesk Flow Design and nothing I was doing worked. This sin isn't for the show, it's just for the time I wasted. This seems to be the face Steven makes whenever someone is going to almost die in an episode. This is the second construction montage in the episode. No engine in the world even resembles this. It looks like a rocket, a jet, and a V6 had a three-way. Not to mention there's no fuel tank. A defective ejector seat could have launched him out any time during that flight. Is there a shop in town that carries F1 single nozzle liquid fueled rockets? This is the only well researched sentence in the whole show, and it's a joke that goes over most people's heads. Sleeping outside without a tent or a pillow. No, don't give him a banana. Character talks in his sleep about an absurd dream cliche. This is the time I'd want that wind tunnel software. I bet this thing has the aerodynamics of a potato with cardboard wings. In this shot, there's clearly no wells for the back wheels, and in the next shot, they retract somehow. Steven's not wearing a seatbelt. And just to pop over to the nearest star system, I'll give him back in 50 years. My calculations are coming up closer to 10,000 years, give or take. Child endangerment. Oh, this kid's killing me. Steven isn't to blame for once. I'm so sorry. I almost got us killed. I'm used to it. This. Inactive! <laughs>